Here on Makers Muse, I have reviewed countless 3D printers over the years. In fact, I have a playlist that goes through all of them dating back to 2014. So you might be wondering, what 3D printers do I use on a day-to-day -day basis for, you know, 3D printing my projects? So I thought it'd be fun to make a video here in 2019 to show you some of the 3D printers I use on a regular basis after reviewing so many, and some of them might come as a bit of surprise. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. Here I am in my garage. I think that bit has uh, well and truly died these days. Believe it or not, these printers behind me aren't the machines I use on a day-to-day -day basis. In fact, they're set printers. I actually have a lot of printers that are scattered around my workshop that I use day-to-day -to, -day to print the projects that you'll see on the channel. For example, the Spherocon, the two-way to one-way mechanism, the Oloids, and heaps of things coming up. I print these on machines that I know are reliable, print with high quality and detail, machines that I just know I'll get a print out when I send the print overnight and come back the next day. So you might be wondering what printers are they? Well, to be honest, they're all FDM slash FFF 3D printers using filament. In this video, I'm not gonna go through any resin printers. I'm actually only just starting to revive my interest in resin printing. So they're only filament based machines. Let's start off with one that you're probably gonna predict. The Prusa Research Mark III. I've been using this machine since I got it at the start of 2018. And I have to say, out of all the machines in the studio, it's printed the majority of the PLA prints you've seen me use on the channel. Most of my projects, like the two-way to one-way mechanism, the Spherocons, a lot of those were done on this machine. And the reason I use this more than almost any other machine is mostly because of this print bed. I really like the removable print surface because I can easily pop parts off and then stick it right back on and continue printing. I've currently got it loaded with my favorite Polyalchemy Elixir color, which is the Polyalchemy Elixir Nightshade Purple. I'm almost run out. I've been printing some really cool stuff with that recently. But I find that for just regular reliable PLA printing, the Prusa Mark III has done me quite well. One thing is the SD card running up the stairs to load into the computer and then coming back down can get tedious, but out of all the machines, this one gets the most use by far. And Joseph is not paying me to say that. So we've got the Prusa Mark III from 2018, and then we've got something a lot newer, and that is this, the Be Very Creative B2X 300. I reviewed this machine not too long ago on the channel, and although I did have a little bit of teething issues with it because of these very long Bowden tubes, the intelligence built in this machine is fantastic. It's one of the quieter machines I run in the studio, and I've been doing less printing on it in PLA than the Prusa Mark III, but I am starting to incorporate it more into my projects, especially where there's very fine detail required, because I do find I get better surface finish on this machine than the Prusa Mark III. The Prusa Mark III, in my experience, although reliable, doesn't have the best surface finish for some details. It seems to have this weird sort of artifacting around sometimes. I don't know exactly if that's my setup or it's something to do with the machine, but in terms of reliability, Prusa Mark III, in terms of a little bit more detail, I will use the B2X 300. One thing I will say is this glass surface, it does come off, but it's not nearly as nice as a magnetic print surface. And I have had a lot of failures where prints will break off the glass surface, especially now in, in Australia where it's starting to get a little bit chilly, the glass surface just isn't sticking as well as I'd like. So I might end up swapping to something else. That's probably my only real complaint using this machine day to day. Next, we have another recent addition to the Makers Muse Studio that's proven itself to be incredibly fascinating for printing exotic, unusual filaments, and that is the CraftBot 3. I did review this very recently and I was very impressed by the dual independent extruder design, the fact that it's so quiet during operation, the rigidity, and I've actually found this machine to be fantastic in printing weird materials. For example, I recently printed these 3D printed zip ties in a polypropylene, it's a glass filled polypropylene, very, very flexible and tough, very difficult for many 3D printers to manage. And in fact, this machine can print semi-flex and flexible filaments as well, because it actually has a nice, well-designed extruder design, which actually fully supports the filament through the path. And I have found that um, the Craftware software is okay, but I actually do run this machine off Simplify 3D. I do have a profile I use for the flexibles, for example, that's very well tuned. And I do actually find it to be better, at least currently, to run this machine than the software that Craft 
Unique provides, and that's just in my experience. Something else I do like about the Craftbot 3 is the print surface is removable. I love my removable print surfaces, and you undo the two screws at the front, and the whole aluminium pulls out. But I will say that this plate weighs a ton compared to the magnetic print surface on other 3D printers. So I do find when you're printing on the extremities, because it's cantilever, it does bounce up and down a little bit as the machine vibrates, and it can leave a little bit of a surface imperfection. I did notice this on the Craftbot Plus when I reviewed it back in 2016, and it does still kind of present itself here. But if you print a little bit slower, it does go away. And as I said, this machine is proving itself to be incredibly valuable in my arsenal for printing unusual, flexible, strange filaments. It handles it like an absolute beast. Next, we have one that might be a little bit surprising to you. It's the XVCO Pioneer. Now, why do I still use this weird Chinese i3 that I'm not sure you can even buy anymore. Well, it actually appealed to me for printing of PLA parts when I have a lot to do. So I've maxed out my other printers. This machine actually proved itself to be quite detailed and quite reliable compared to my other experiences with other i3s like the Ender 3. Now I know I had a very bad experience compared to most, but I never really had a bad experience with this one. And another thing I do like is it's quite low power. There's no, there's no heated bed and it actually has a removable glass plate with a really interesting textured surface I haven't seen before. And I think they actually removed from other machines that they sent out and it actually prints well onto it. It actually has a 32 bit control board with a touch screen as well. I like my touch screens. So the Xfico Pioneer actually still gets a bit of use from time to time. And it's parked here in another room, ready to go in case I need it. But we're not done. There's actually a few more 3D printers that I use that you might very well be surprised in. And they're in this cupboard. Yes, printers all over the house. So what I have in here are my tier time 3D printers, the Up Mini 2 and the Cetus Mark 1, Mark 2 and Mark 3. One of them's, I don't know which. I only use the Mark II and Mark III Cetus these days. The Mark I just is a bit worn out. It was a pre-production unit I got in 2016 and the quality of the prints, it just isn't that great. There's a lot of ghosting. If I really need to use it, I will, but the Mark II and III get a lot of use. I actually printed my sliding puzzle completely on the Cetus Mark II. Believe it or not, all the moving parts printed fantastically and I actually use the Up Mini 2 all the time for ABS prints. It actually prints ABS really reliably and it's the only machine I really use to print ABS in the entire studio as long as it fits in its 120 by 120 millimeter build volume. It's quite small. And the reason they're all stored in this cupboard locked away is because all of these machines are Wi-Fi, which actually is very handy to me working in another room upstairs because I can actually send files wirelessly to all of these machines and then they can start printing, which is great. But there is a downside to the Cetus machines. They only really run the Up Studio software, which has severe limitations. For example, you can't do more than two perimeters in it. I don't know why. And you need to print with a raft realistically on all of these machines. Now of small parts, rafts won't add much time or much material use, but for large parts, it can add upwards of half an hour just to print a raft and then to go on top of that, which can really, really slow things down. But I will say in terms of reliability, these are some of the best machines I have in the entire workshop. And I have done many projects on them, so they do still see weekly and even sometimes daily use when I'm pumping out parts for projects. So thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and this look behind the scenes to the machines I use day to day on my projects here on Makers Muse. Let me know in the comments what your day to day 3D printer is. What machine have you found to be the most reliable machine for your circumstance? Because I'm sure there's gonna be a wide variety of answers. And if you did enjoy this video here on Makers Muse, please consider subscribing so you don't miss any future projects, reviews and tutorials. Because as I said, I use these machines to make my projects and I have heaps coming up. So I'd love to see you there. Catch you later guys, bye.